What's up guys? What's growing on? So we've had a uh, lot of awesome feedback there from that panhandle trip. Everybody was really excited. A lot of people obviously can more relate to that northern climate. Um, but I've also received a lot of questions, a lot of feedback uh, about citrus and I've kind of mentioned it briefly maybe in some past videos but I've never really gotten into you know extreme depth for detail. So you know we're just north of Tampa, 30 miles north of Tampa and unfortunately greening which is kind of like the AIDS virus is a disease that's starting to attack and kill citrus here in Florida and it's basically a psyllid it's a small bug that affects the nutrient uptake of the plant so it basically you know starts boring into that leaf um, it'll you know stop that plant from being able to take up nutrients from the leaves and eventually ends up killing it there is no long-term cure So we're out here at Jubilee. Um, this is my first time planting citrus in a while. You know, here in Tampa, south of Tampa, it's not something we do a lot of. We have thousands of fruit trees out here, you know, 50, 60, 70 different types of uh, mangoes, you know, all different types of bananas, lots of diversity, um, but no citrus. And, you know, Ryan, the homeowner here, he loves citrus just like I do. And I have to say, and something I want to point out, you know, being up in North Florida there, eating some of those satsumas and stuff, you know, reminded me of being a kid again, reminded me of really how amazing citrus is. And, you know, I always make this comment, citrus, because you know, because of the disease, because we can't grow it, um, you know, and I'm not mad at citrus in, in general, um, but it's something I'll point out, you know, we only have that problem with citrus now today because of the way we've managed citrus, because of the way we've grown citrus here in Florida, you know, there's, thousands of different trees that we could be growing and we only grew citrus in a monoculture one species you know in large 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 plantings you know through 50 60 percent of the state of florida you know it's kind of like the main crop or the sun the sunshine state so you know of course nature found a way it, it was to be expected because of the way we've planted it so you know long story short you know i do a lot of consulting work you know i'm out in the field all the time i'm at different properties different areas and from time to time i do run into citrus that's been unaffected by the greening and typically speaking you know that citrus that's unaffected by the greening is in an understory situation of live oak we don't know what it is it could be a micro rhizal relationship um you know but there's something going on there and I'm not the only one that's seen this. Um, I've talked to friends that have seen this. I've talked to coworkers that have seen this. I've talked to extension agents that have seen this and nobody has an answer for me. Nobody knows why, but something that I have seen, you know, like I said, in a lot of my consulting work that there's some understory citrus out there, you know, in these more affected areas that hasn't been affected. So what I'm getting at now is we're planting, you know, 12, citrus out here at jubilee and they're all going in the you know the understory of the live oaks here so we've got you know lemons limes oranges navels tangerines just a, a selection of some different citrus that's going to be going over here in the understory and it's definitely a risk you know ryan knows about the greening problem and you know, they use a lot of compost tea out here they use a lot of biochar obviously there's a lot of diversity out here there's all different types of species everything from native species um, predatory beneficial species species you know there's there's a lot going on out here so it's not like it's just a farm of pure citrus so if there's a chance for this stuff so, to survive I think it's gonna happen here you know and that's probably because of their strict compost tea regimen so you know we just picked these trees up from uh, there's only a couple of nurseries here in the state of Florida that can actually sell citrus also because of the greening because it's so tough and you know something I want to point out to y'all like I said, we just got these trees like two days ago. These are some of the only things that aren't in the ground here. You know, I want to show you all this real quick though, because this is why we do not plant citrus. So, you know, down here at the bottom of this tree, you'll see there's two tags on there. And this tag is the ISD tag. You can almost see it right here. Applied on 11 30 
So right here, this is the Mauritius. This is the variety of citrus. So these, these trees get a tag that's called an ISD tag. And that ISD stands for imidacropin soil drench. And it's basically a poison that's been drenched on this root system of the tree. And I believe when they started first doing this ISD drench, they would tell you the tree was safe for a year. Well, I sent my guy Phil to go pick up these trees yesterday, and he told me they'll be good for, or she told him, you know, the lady from the, from the nursery, from the grove, she said those will be good for three months. So, you know, there we go. You know, nature is already finding a way, and it's already coming quicker. So that poison that was originally drenched on those roots that was safe for 12 months, you know, now they're saying is good for three months. So, you know, that, that's the big reason why we're not planting citrus. I know the University of Florida is, you know, frantically rushing, working to genetically modify citrus. There's also some new rootstocks that are supposed to be greening resistant. And what's even more exciting, I don't know if it's more exciting, because, you know, here we are playing with nature and, you know, inventing things that maybe shouldn't be invented. And we've done this before. This is how we've ended up with love bugs here in the state of Florida. And that's a more of a problem now than it, you know, was a solution. But there is a bug now or a fly. I'm not even 100% sure what it is. But I have seen some of my friends post, you know, that they've put in a request. And they've been sent this fly or this bug or whatever it is. Um, I'll do a little bit more research on that, maybe do a follow-up video, but you can actually get this fly, release this in your yard, and it's supposed to help maintain that psyllid. So, you know, I would say if you're in central Florida, um, like where I am or south where I am, and the greening's a major problem, and you really want to try one, try it in this understory of the oak situation. I think it's, you know, if you have to have one, it's worth a try. And, you know, and for you smaller buyers, growers out there, I'll give you a little pro tip. And the big box stores isn't going to like this, but, you know, places like Home Depot, you go and you buy a citrus tree, they give you like a one-year warranty on this thing. So even if it did die from the pest and not something you did, you can bring that thing back and return it. Obviously, where I buy these trees, I'm not returning them. But that is a little pro tip that I'll point out. You know, you could potentially, you know, buy a citrus tree from the big box store. If it dies, return it. You know, it is what it is. So I would say, like I said, trying citrus, go for the understory. Um, but when you get up into Pensacola, when you get up to where my friend was, Joe, there in Micanopy, they don't have as much of a pest problem. There isn't as much as that greening and that psyllid because of the cold weather. That cold weather, you know, tends to set those pests back in the wintertime, you know, really keeps them at bay. Now, every year, you know, that line is moving further and further north where that greening is starting to take place, you know, as we're getting warmer and warmer and warmer, it seems. You know, that warming trend is definitely coming, but, you know, it's really sad, you know. I, I literally, when I bit into that tangerine when I was up in Pensacola a couple weeks ago, I mean, I had like flashbacks. You know, I had memories that I was getting from when I was just a little kid. So, you know, I, I miss citrus. I hope they fix this problem. And I hope we can honestly fix this problem, you know, in a, a beyond organic type manner, not a genetic modification type manner. You know, I think there's always a, a better solution. You know, I know science is good for some stuff, but I also think that, you know, mother nature always seems to figure stuff out so there's my little tidbit on citrus i gotta get back to work hope you guys enjoyed this quick one and uh like subscribe share pounder